Hello, sixth grade, and welcome to 1.3 Gravity in Motion Notes. This is part two of your notes um, that you have downloaded on the backpack, as well as you can type in on a Word document. That's fine too. I will upload them to Google Classroom as well. So these are 1.3 Gravity in Motion Notes. And some things to ponder as we go on. I'm not going to get into too much detail on them because I would like you to, you know, talk talk to your Mom, dad, brother, sister, once again, your dog, your cat, your stuffed animal, you can even FaceTime your friends and you can talk to them about this. I'm sure that's all what you want to do. Um, we can even post a discussion in Google Classroom to talk about these. So, but at the end of these notes, you should be able to know the answer to these four. So what is gravity? How do we know it exists? How does it affect Earth? And why is gravity necessary? So another question for you, this might be even arguably more important than the other ones, is why does everyone from so long ago always look so mad? Hmm. Well, a couple theories is that I wouldn't want to sit and pose for a painting. It's a little different than a photograph. You probably had to pose there for hours. Also, dental hygiene probably wasn't a big thing, so they probably don't want to show their teeth. But really, most importantly, who is this? If you said Isaac Newton, that would be correct. So he's a famous scientist and mathematician, and he has many studies about gravity, motion, and how it governs space. So unfortunately, I can't click on that YouTube link because it, it actually boots me out of the screen recording for whatever reason. So uh, I encourage you to follow that. It's it's kind of strange to, didn't, to, to watch it because it's actually a brain pop with Tim and Moby, the guy and the robot, um, but it's a British version of it. And they have a, it's the same cartoons, but they just have different voices, which is strange. Um, but essentially, Isaac Newton was a very famous scientist and mathematician. He has a very interesting life. There's a lot of intrigue around his mathematical achievements, particularly, though. Um, some people don't believe that he was as, you know, as inventive as as he might claim to be um there are there are a lot of talks about he stole some ideas and things like that um but newton newton does get tagged with being the father of of gravity and things like that um which we'll talk about he is very very interesting life though and, and i encourage you to read up more about him as as you get older or even throughout this if you're bored so but we're, we're going to talk about his his talks in gravity so Gravity is a force, okay? Gravity is the force that attracts all objects toward each other, and you should know that by now. Um, but Newton hypothesized that gravity, which is the same stuff that keeps us on the ground and keeps us in our seats and keeps us, you know, um, standing and things like that, also keeps Earth and everything else in our solar system in orbit around the sun. So this is a vital principle to understand. And it comes into Newton's law of universal gravitation states that every object in the universe attracts every other object. And the strength of the force of gravity between two objects depends on two factors. This is important. It's the masses of the objects and the distance between them. All right, so not only how big the object is, but it's the distance between them. So the sun exerts a far more or a far stronger gravitational pull on Mercury versus it would on Neptune, something like that, because Mercury is much smaller, much, much closer significantly to the sun than it is um, closer to Neptune. So Newton's law of universal gravitation, it, but every object in the universe attracts every other object, all right? It's still exerting an attraction. It's just going to affect it based on size and distance, all right? So here's gravity, mass, and weight. So here's the difference. Some people get these confused, mass and weight. Mass is the amount of matter an object, and weight is the measure of the force of gravity on an object. So mass is how big something is, and weight is the measure of force on the gravity. So compare the mass and weight of these puppies. Okay. Oh, I know. So cute. So on the left-hand side, that obviously has a larger mass than the one on the right. Therefore, it's probably going to have a larger weight okay, than the puppy on the right. Now, we can say that because on Earth, we're all subjected to the same amount of weight, 1 g of gravity. Okay, so it's it's our mass and weight are kind of typically the larger thing on Earth is going to be heavier, but that's not always the case. Think about a uh, 10 pound weight, all right? A 10 pound weight might take up, might be the size of your computer, maybe a little bit smaller. Think about a box that holds a, I don't know, a vacuum cleaner, okay? That box is not going to be 10 pounds when it's empty. Okay, it's bigger, it has a larger mass, 
but it actually weighs less. Okay, so understand that mass and weight are not the same thing, and sometimes they are not correlated exactly based on the bigger they are or the heavier they are. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. And here's where we get very tricky. It's Earth versus the moon. Does our mass or our weight change on the moon? Do, 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 do. Do. It would be your weight. The amount of space you take up does not change, but the gravitational pull changes. Okay, here's a common misconception though. You are not losing weight. Weight and mass get confusing because if a large person goes up and they say, I want to, I don't feel like exercising, I'll just go to the moon, then I'll lose weight. All right, they're going to get up on the moon. They're still going to be the same size as they were on Earth. They're not, their size is not going to change. They might weigh less, but their size is still the same, okay? So that's where the correlation gets a little tricky because typically with, with people, it's the larger you are, the heavier you are, which is true, okay? But if you go up to the moon, you'll weigh less, quote unquote, but you haven't, you haven't lost any mass, okay? And you're still going to be the large person that you are. And vice versa, if you're a small person, you go up, you're still going to be the small person that you are. So your weight on the moon is about 16.5% of your weight on Earth. Please ask me if you have any questions on this, because this can get a little confusing for us, because it's kind of, we use weight a lot of the time um, to signify someone that's much larger. Um, and, and sometimes that has to do with your mass and the amount of space that you take up. So gravity, here's the second portion, the gravity and distance. Gravity is also affected by distance. The force of gravity decreases as distance increases, okay? So the force of gravity decreases as distance increases. So your force of gravity, as you pull away from something, you have less of a gravitational pull to it. As you go closer to something, it has more of a gravitational pull. They're inversely proportional, okay? So the force of gravity decreases as distance increases. Ask me if you have any questions on that. All right, so you're probably asking yourself though, if gravity is pulling on everything, why doesn't Earth crash into the sun? Great question, okay? It is a good question, but we have our wonderful, wonderful principle, and this is throwing it back to fifth grade, of inertia, hooray! This is the tendency of an object to resist a change in its motion. So this forks acts, force, forks, force acts on objects that are both moving and not moving. The more mass an object has, the greater its inertia, okay? So the more mass an object has, think about a, a semi-truck. So you have two, you have a truck and a scooter at the top of the hill, all right? Remember, inertia is the tendency for it to resist change. They are both sitting at the top of the hill. They have inertia, all right? They're not moving, they're resisting a change. Then you change that motion, okay? You change their motion, you push them down the hill the force of the truck or the inertia of the truck is going to be greater than the scooter because the truck is a much larger object, okay? So here's some examples. Remember, we talked about you riding in a car and it stops suddenly, you continue to move forward. You guys will remember this video from last year. Once again, I can't click on it, but you see that mannequin, when you hit the wall, the mannequin moves forward because he wants to continue moving with the motion of the car. That's an object's inertia. So the mannequin was traveling at 30 kilometers an hour, 15 kilometers an hour, whatever. 15 kilometers an hour, 10 kilometers an hour, 5 kilometers an hour, however fast it's going. It's moving at that speed. Then when it is required to stop, when an outside force causes it to stop, it's going to move forward, maintaining that speed of 5 kilometers an hour or 10 kilometers an hour because it is resisting the change in its motion. So when we look at these baseball players, oh, I miss baseball. So when you look at the players moving, especially the player in the outfield, watch, that's actually Andrew McCutcheon, watch Andrew McCutcheon hit against and bounce back because if there was no wall there and there was no gravity, he would continue moving into the wall and keep going. His The wall is forcing him to make a change. His inertia is directing him towards that wall. Gravity is pulling him back down. Gravity is allowing him to not keep floating up all the way up in outer space. The ball falls down, okay? Um, things like that. The batter swinging and hitting, okay? The ball traveling towards the mound, all right? The ball traveling would go in an infinite direction. It would go the same. The ball is inertia. It's moving in one single path. And until the batter swings and changes the direction, that ball would move infinitely, okay? Well, obviously the forces of gravity work on that as well. So there's lots of forces working there. 
All right, so this is going to be Newton's first law of motion, which we all remember. An object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion with a constant speed and direction unless acted upon by a force. And again, who can explain what that means? Pause the video, give it a shot. Okay. Exactly. So an object will continue to move or an object will continue to stay still unless it's acted upon by a force. And that force can be anything. Okay. And this applies to space. All right. And I'll show you in just a second. But think about just sitting there. Your pencil will not move unless you move it, unless you pick it up. Your water bottle will not move unless you pick it up or unless an earthquake hits or a gust of wind or some whatever. All right. Those or you will continue to move something, an object will move unless it is forced to stop. And a lot of time what's forcing it to stop is us or gravity. All right, and this applies, oh, we do have, a, we do have some music, but I'll, I'll play it momentarily. Newton concluded that inertia and gravity combined to keep Earth in orbit around the sun and the moon in orbit around the Earth. So Earth is moving in a constant path around the sun. It's, 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 moving around the sun in a constant path so the gravity and inertia kind of balance each other out and the inertia keeps it moving <laughs> everybody let's review let's review so once again this is going to be a review for the whole 1.2 1.3 i'm not going to take up any more of your time all right you can pause these and just do them again to practice there is a review worksheet but congratulations you guys just learned some science i'm proud of you all right so at the end there is a review worksheet i would like you to complete as well um just to review one point two and 1.3 together. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you later.